Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Yassin, located in Yassin, German East Africa, and involving elements of the German East Africa Force, the British Empire, and India. On the 18th to 19th of January, 1915, German commander Paul Emil von Leto Vorbeck was riding his earlier successes against the British Indian Expeditionary Forces in 1914. His main concern now, though, was to prevent the British attack on the city of Tanga, especially since Tanga had already shrugged off one British attack in 1914. Commander Leto Vorbeck turned his sights on Yassin, which had been taken by the British and Indian forces earlier in 1914. The purpose of the British to take Yassin was to help British HQ secure British East Africa and to give them an entry point to make forays into German East Africa. Guarding the Yassin was the Indian Colonel Ragbir Singh and four companies of Indian troops. German commander Leto Vorbeck gathered nine companies of German colonial troops and began the assault on the 18th of January. The attack was quick and losses were heavy on both sides. Colonel Singh was unfortunately killed in the fighting, but British Captain J.G.J. J. Hansen and Captain J. Turner, both leaders in the British Indian Expeditionary Force, were captured. Soon after the captains were captured, they were brought before Commander Leto Vorbeck. The German officer offered to release the captains on the condition that they swore not to participate in the fighting in the future. Both captains agreed to this readily. Neither side realized that British HQ had sent Brigadier General Michael Tai and 800 more soldiers from the British Indian Expeditionary Forces along with a town-class light cruiser to give support to Colonel Singh. Unfortunately, Brigadier General Tai was unable to reach the battle in time. Even without this knowledge, however, Commander Leto Vorbeck realized that he would be unable to survive many more attacks like this. He had a limited number of soldiers, and while equipment might be able to be replaced, his men couldn't be. He was already in the process of developing different tactics. Instead of operating as a standing army, he'd focus on guerrilla warfare. His target would be the Uganda Railway, while the British forces themselves withdrew to defensive positions. This battle did have the overall effect of keeping Tanga safe for the time being, as the British suspended plans of invading the area. The resulting casualties for both sides were high. The Germans suffered a total of 290 casualties, including 87 killed, 203 wounded, while the British suffered 600 casualties, comprising of approximately 200 killed and 400 captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.